Hey there, with update 2.3 for Affinity Photo, we received several new features that I covered in the previous video, but they also add some smaller improvements, some minor changes, and one of those minor changes affecting a new dialog box that was introduced in 2.2 few months ago that allow us to power duplicate from the dialog box without need for any manual transformation. So let's take a look today. I'm going to show you how we can quickly duplicate a shape and also apply some transformation on it from the box without need for the manual adjustments. So here it is, I got a nice picture and I want some shapes on the top. So let's search for the shape tool on the left side. In my case, I got a rather small screen on laptop, so I need to open up this additional menu here to show me rest of the tools. There's a shape tool and keep in mind, this may have different icon for you because usually it's the last use shaped. So let's search for the triangle. I'm going to draw a triangle in order to maintain the proportion, press and hold shift on your keyboard or press additional finger on your iPad screen. So here it is. Let's make it a bit larger. Again, I'm holding shift. So I got my proportion right. It's at the center. If you cannot see those additional guiding lines like me, keep in mind, I need to turn on snapping and in that I snap to multiple things. And one of them is the object bounding boxes and also midpoints as well. We can snap to guides, of course, but I like to snap to other objects as well. And I like to keep snap to object geometry on. So let's turn this on as well, just in case we got more objects. All right, so snapping is on. This way I can reposition this quickly to the center and I will not need in this color. As you can see at the top left, I got fill color and stroke color. So let's get rid of the fill color. Nothing. And for the stroke color, I would choose white. We can adjust the thickness of the line using this slider. So I think maybe 30, 30 will do. But I want it to blend with the image below. So I will change the blending mode for this whole layer to be overlay. So it's like semi-transparent, making the colors below even brighter. All right, and now I click on this layer with triangle and simply hit enter or return. It will show you this move slash duplicate dialog box. It was added in update 2.2, not the one, not the recent one, not the November one, the previous one, but in the November one, they make some changes here, they improve it. So what we can do from here, we can of course move the object. So if I, I can move the object horizontally 300 pixels, it will move. If you want to create a copy of the object and keep the original one, simply use the checkbox with duplicate. So I got the original one and the move one is move 300 pixels. I can of course move, make more than one copy and each copy will be moved 300 pixels horizontally. How about if I want to move it left? We can use the negative value as well. We can make a minus 300 and take a look. It's all going to the left. Same will be with the vertical value, but that's not my goal. So I don't want to move it with vertical horizontal. All right. What I want to do is I'm going to add rotation to it. So if we add like 10%, keep in mind, I got 10 copies of it. So I got 10% for each copy rotating around. Let's make it a weird number like seven and increase number of copies. So seven and then we increase copies. So they kind of almost overlap. They will not overlap, but almost overlap just like this. And now we got also scale to our disposal, right? So we can scale it down. So with every copy, we can move it down. So let's make it 90%. And that's an interesting result, don't you think? With every new copy, we make this triangle a bit smaller. And thanks to that, we got this interesting geometry effect. And as the final thing, you see the insertion modes right now here. So we can put it 
inset in front or behind the item. We can change that. In my case, it will not change anything because we don't have fill color. We got only stroke color and it's also blending with overlay. So it's not changed the output, but keep in mind that's a new feature added recently. We can insert new objects, those duplicates we're creating in front or behind. We can now set this up. So as you can see, they refresh this panel move and duplicate at some important features like scale and insertion mode front or back. If I click OK, the program will generate all of those shapes for me and there are proper vector shapes on separate layers and I can keep working with them. All right, so I can now, let's say, group everything that I have created, holding shift, I can select all, right click, we can put it into one group and apply uh, some kind of layer style to that whole group. So we can make some kind of outer glow maybe, let's try that. We can make them glow just like that. And then we can select a color here. Keep in mind, we should be even able to later on adjust that color using some adjustment panel above so it don't need to be a solid color let's try to do that i will pick the color from the image like this blue all right a bit of noise will do blending mode is screen by default but we can adjust that as well let's put it as normal close and we can still add additional panel for adjusting this color. So let's search for color saturation, saturation adjustment, maybe this one, we can use HSL by default, and then we can move this slider left or right a bit. Super oversaturated, but that's what we are aiming to achieve this time. And take a look in the layer panel, I got additional layer with this color adjustment and I can add a mask to it. All right, and let's put a gradient on that mask. This way we should be able to create a mask. So it's affecting only the center of it, of this triangle. So these colors are a bit different in the center and all around will be the original picture. As you can see, now I'm only affecting the center of this composition with this adjustment. So what we did today, we use a new move and duplicate dialog box. It's we get some new features in the last update. So what I did, I draw a triangle and then I simply hit enter on my keyboard, right? So select the first triangle, hit enter or return. Here it is, and with this box, we managed to create multiple duplicates, add rotation to them, and also scale them down with each new copy. That was really quick process, and we end up with this nice cosmic abstract here. I hope you can create something similar, and I will see you in the next tutorial. By the way, if you wanna go extra mile, you can consider joining us a channel member. I prepare over five hours of premium ad-free tutorials for my members. So don't forget to check that option by, check, by clicking the join button. And I will see you next time. Bye.